What's going on everybody? My name is Marcus. Welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be five tips to help you succeed a lot faster in your eBay business. And these five things will help you grow your business safely and be able to help you reach your goals monetarily as well as being able to list more items. Um, last year I did six figures on eBay. This year I'm on course to do another six figures. These five steps are things that I implemented into my business and my processes that allow me to streamline my business, be able to list more items and be able to get more money coming into my store on a consistent basis. So I'm going to share these tips with you in hopes that it helps you grow your business as well. And it just makes the whole process a whole lot easier and more simple to do so it doesn't overwhelm you, especially for new resellers, uh, growing your listing goal. Uh, sourcing more items, being able to get those items listed uh, in a timely manner is definitely something that I struggled with myself when I first got started uh, trying to grow my business. I started listing more items than I was prepared to list and just listing them in a timely manner really stressed me out and put me in a bad place mentally to where I just didn't want to do it anymore. Um, don't compare yourself to others. That is number, that's, that's not even on the list. That's a bonus tip. Don't compare your progress to other people's progress because for someone that does 10 a day, my 65 a day sounds impossible, right? So for me going from 10 to the 65 that I'm at now, didn't seem like it was any anywhere near the near future. And that was just a year ago. So uh, compare yourself to your old self, uh, compare the progress that you're making to the progress that you've had in the past, and you'll be a lot more um, at peace with the whole process of growing your eBay business. Don't compare yourself to me. Don't compare yourself to any other YouTubers out there, especially people that have been doing it longer than I have and list way more items than I do. It's definitely gonna make you feel a lot better about yourself and where you're at in your business if you don't compare yourself to others. So the first thing that's on the list is schedule. The biggest and most important part of your business is scheduling things out. Having a set plan, set time, set time frame in your day, which you want certain tasks done by. So for me, the first thing I do in the morning is I get up, I do my customer service, I answer any messages, I accept offers, send offers, um, anything that needs to be done on the customer service side of things. And then I launch my drafts uh, so that way my items go up straight first thing in the morning and I can start getting those items sold within the same day. Um, then from there, I do um, buyer groups, markdown sales if they need to be updated, uh, coupons and things of that nature to try and generate more sales from previous buyers or followers of my store. The next thing that I do is shipping. I try to do my shipping between 10 and 12 o'clock in the morning simply because I do um, a Patreon call with my clients at 9 to 10 a.m. in the morning. If I didn't have that call, I would try to be done with my shipping by 10 but the clients definitely re, uh, require my full attention, my full dedication to them and helping them grow their business. So I don't wanna be distracted by trying to get any other tasks done while I'm dedicating my time to helping my clients grow their business. So from there, once I've done my shipping, I drop my packages off at the post office. Then I come back and I take all my photos in one time. I don't stop when I start taking my photos. That way I can get the whole task done and then jump immediately into taking uh, my photos to my computer to list them. I try to not put much of a gap in between there. If anything, I uh, eat a sandwich while my pictures are uploading or something like that. Um, then from there, I jump right into immediately listing all my items of the photos that I've just taken. That narrows down the time that I can forget flaws forget the color of something because sometimes navy blue be looking black when you do photos uh, so i just like to get my my photos and my listings done immediately together so that way it minimizes the flaws and errors that can go into a listing by spacing them apart by a day or even days i know a lot of people take a bunch of photos one day a week and then they'll list off those photos all week long and in my opinion that just leaves too much margin for error to uh list an item with a flaw that you forgot about so once i do that i pack all my items in these bags in these boxes and they get sat over here for the next day to go to the storage unit in the morning time uh, and then from there i reset my store to zero and do it all over again which I'll go over that later on in the video. I can't stress it enough how much 
of importance a schedule is. Uh, before I implemented a schedule into my process and I was just kind of doing things at will and at random, I didn't have any structure in my schedule and it would kind of just take me all day long to, to even get started on things or either finish a task from start to finish. Uh, I would get interrupted. I would check a notification on um, my phone. I would watch a YouTube video. I would scroll to find out what video I'm going to watch next. Uh, all these things get in the way of me actually getting the job done as soon as possible. So taking the guesswork out of your schedule is imperative to being able to just get things done from start to finish. The second tip that I have for you guys is having a dedicated station for everything. So this is my photo station. Let me pull these clothes out of the way for you guys. This is my photo station. I get asked questions a lot about how I did this. So this is a foam insulation board. It's one and a half inches thick. It's five inches tall and it's four, or it's five feet tall and four feet wide. Uh, I bought it from Lowe's. It cost like 40 bucks, but a client of mine from the Patreon was looking you can get the same board at Home Depot for 20 bucks. So probably want to go to a Home Depot if you have one near you. This board is thick. It's heavy enough to where I can lean on it and it not break. It won't bend under the weight of clothing. And um, it just it's all around. It's lightweight. It's easy to move. Uh, the fabric, I overpaid for this at Joann Fabric. You can get you a $10 throw blanket from Walmart and wrap it around the board. I use these clamps to hold the fabric in place and put those on almost all the corners. And then, so this is just a end table that I can put my feet under with a clamp on the table to hold the board from sliding off. So you see, it won't slide off. And so that way, that way I can tilt the board and lay the clothing on there and it doesn't require me putting it on a hanger. Because let's face it, Putting items on hangers adds to the process. And at this point in my business, I'm trying to minimize anything that adds extra time to taking my photos or doing whatever it does, uh, whatever I'm doing in the process. So um, I do have, if you can see, there's this fish twine that goes over the back side of the board. And I guess I can show you how I did that. So I put this screw right here in the back side of it in the middle and i just wrapped the fishing twine around it and so it just comes over the top like so so you can hang a hanger on it and pretty much the wire the twine is invisible and it just seems like the hanger is floating in midair let me grab the hanger and show you i just put it on the loop bada bing bada boom hanger and these are for like jackets that slide off the board or like polyester shirts that don't stick very well. Some of them do, some of them don't. Uh, and in order to keep the item from sliding off the board, I just hang it up. Uh, most of the items do stick very well. See, that's not really how I would take the picture, but you get the gist of it, how, how well the fabric grips the material of the item that I'm listing. So that's, that's one part of my station. Next is a bagging and tagging station. This has a scale on it. The bags that I put the items in. There's the bigger bags. These are 12 by 15. These are 10 by 13. These are my custom SKUs that I put on the bags. I make these myself. Uh, there is a document in the description that you can get to use um, to use to make your own personal uh, SKU numbers, as well as a link for these actual labels that I use. You get like. 12 of these rolls for like 30 bucks and there's 1300 labels on each roll so literally you get thousands of labels for 40 bucks almost um it's a win-win it's better than paying avery uh or using avery to like make your labels which is what i was doing i bag the items after i uh list them i take a photo of them on the scale so i know that whether the item is a first class item or a priority item when i'm doing my listing process along with having the skew in the listing as well and then i'll bag them up uh, after i bag them up i put them in these boxes once i do that everything's ready in the listing process i come over here to my desk and i list everything is within this area so my whole ebay business in my house at least fits in this this what is this six by ten square feet i don't know 
whatever this this area right here is my designated area however i guess this is all spillover because this is where i store my items that are in my queue the ikea bags are the queue these are the items that are going to get listed next and then this is the holding station for all the items that are listed until they get transported to the storage unit this right here is donation bin and that's just where i keep my ikea bags this printer right there is for uh customs forms labels that need to be printed out on um, a custom form for apos and things like that uh i just don't know how to print them on my rollo i know there's a way i just haven't taken the time to figure it out yet uh so that's my set listing stations and then i have a set shipping station which i'll show you right now so having a dedicated shipping system allows me to ship more items as fast as i possibly can i got my printer my computer my scale so everything is within reach so if i'm sitting in my chair i can reach up and grab shoe boxes right here i can reach up and grab um my first class poly mailers and i can reach over here and grab my flat rate envelopes which is the predominant priority mail shipping method i use but if either one of these methods don't work i can then reach over here i've got tie back envelopes right here or i have legal flat rate envelopes which are the next uh priority method that i use for flat rate envelopes and then i do also use like these regional rate b boxes because they can go priority now that they don't exist anymore that allows me to not have to do a bunch of moving uh when it comes to shipping my items i put all my items that i'm shipping for the day in this box i sit it right here next to me i grab the item out i put the dimensions in I, after i weigh it on the scale of course i put the dimensions in print the label everything's within hands reach i don't have to move so it just speeds the process up which also brings me to my next point step three is narrow down your niche so for me, when I first started, I was an everything seller. That means I was picking up anything that was profitable and I was selling it on eBay. But that led me to a nightmare in storage because things were everywhere. There was no method to the madness. Um, things were kind of just all over the place, uh, wherever, I, wherever I could fit them at. Now I have a dedicated storage system that fits clothing only. I do have some shoes which uh, is another point that I like to make, which is why I'm getting out of shoes. Uh, shoes take up a lot of space. They require a lot of cleaning and processing that I don't feel like doing. Yes, the ROI is good, but the time that I spend cleaning and the space that I use storing shoes, it doesn't make sense for me to continue using sh uh, shoes as an item that I'm gonna sell. My storage unit is fully maximized for clothing not for shoes these shoes are bulky they sit in the way they take up space hats are another story i've got hats hundreds of hats can fit in one tote essentially if i didn't have them separated by uh genre and whether it's an nba hat a racing hat a camouflage hat uh just a basic hat but shoes this is like 40 pairs of shoes taking up a significant amount of space compared to what these hats do. Now, these are also, some of these uh, listings are not hats. These are clothes. Those are hats, 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 hats. All these hats can fit into one tote if I didn't have them separated. But that leads me into also the eBay shipping supplies. These are free boxes that I get from eBay. Along with free shipping supplies for the USPS uh, to ship shoes in, but as I said, I don't want to store shoes. I don't want to clean shoes. Uh, hats are super quick to list. Shoes can be fast as well. It's just something that I'm getting out of. Now my storage system is optimized for clothing. My shelves fit clothing. My sequential number system is numbered for clothing. Uh, it just makes sense for me to pour gas on what's working and what's working is clothing. So if I was to still try to store everything in here, I'd have stuff all over the place. There's no way I'd be able to have 6,000 active listings of everything and have this much organization about it. Uh, so find what you want to sell, find what you enjoy selling, 
Find what you can store the easiest, the most organized, and allows you to pull your orders the fastest way possible. For me, I could just go directly to whichever box my item is, pull the box out, grab the item out, move on to the next one. It's, qu it's quick, it's simple, it works, it looks nice and neat. You gotta find out what the best niche is for you, and for me, it just happened to be clothing. I could find it in abundance, it's fairly cheap. Uh, there's no shortage of it anywhere, honestly. Um, and I can list it the fastest. I can store the most of it. Um, so that's what I decided to go with. Uh, for you, it might be baseball cards, Pokemon cards, or something where you can store all your inventory in one tiny box. And uh, it doesn't require a lot of space. It's super cheap to ship. Um, easy to acquire. You know, it just depends on whatever your niche is. Whatever you have uh, somewhat either a passion about or easy uh, availability to get a hold of. I want to send a real quick shout out to all the members of my Patreon. You guys are doing so good. I'm very happy that you guys are seeing success since joining the Patreon. Uh, one of the guys in there, man, he's killing it. He's full time construction job during the day and then still doing listings on eBay at night, man. That guy's grinding. He's also killing on whatnot, man. So shout out to you, Sal, the goat. Definitely doing your thing, bro. Uh, just really happy to see the progress that these guys are making since joining the Patreon. And a big shout out to the channel members as well. You guys rock. Also, thanks for all you guys' support. Thanks to all the subscribers, period, that just take the time to watch these videos and continue to support me over the months. You guys are the best. Another great point to niching down is you start selling the same types of items over and over and again. So, number one, you know where to get them from uh, in bulk because... Once you become an expert in a field, you realize where things end up at for you to be able to get them in bulk. Number two is it allows you to narrow down your shipping process to um, offer a flat rate. You sell the same types of items over and over again, so you know, in theory, what they cost you on average to ship. So for me, I got flat rate items and first class items. I charge a flat fee on first class of one price set price and I charge a flat fee for priority at one set price now the bulk of those items will go under the set price that I have them at um the majority of priority packages go in a flat rate envelope however if I do receive an item that is uh, a bit bulkier they will still get a great deal at $8.95 for a flat rate fee even if it costs me 10 to 12 bucks to ship I don't overcharge the buyer I just pass on the savings to them but that allows you to be aware of what price you can set inside your store as well to pass on savings to the buyers as well as just make the whole listing process more streamlined because you don't have to figure out dimensions and packages and things like that um, until the shipping process uh, comes into play because you do need to have correct dimensions on your packages when you buy your labels shout out to my guy Walter that bought this 511 tactical polo shirt he's a viewer of the channel really appreciate your support brother Hope all is well with you and I hope you enjoy your item. So step number four is create processes. Uh, and by this, I just mean put a little bit of redundancy into your business. Make things the same in uniformity across your store uh, and across your business for each individual task. So for me, that means taking my photos the same way every time. Um, whether it's a shirt, a top of some sort, it'll have the same photo sequence as every other top or shirt uh, does across my store. The same goes for pants. Pants will be in the same sequence, every item, all the time, without fail. And that way, whether I train someone to do it for me or I do the listing myself, the buyer will not be able to tell the difference in the way the store looks. It'll have the same layout, the same feel, the same shopping experience, store-wide, which also takes the thinking out of the process for you. Like, oh, here's this pair of pants. Now, what, what do I do? You freeze up, you know, it's going to be without thinking. You just throw it up there. Boom. Main photo. Boom. Waist measurement, rise measurement, inseam measurement, leg opening measurement, back photo. Boom. Good to go. Take a size tag. You know, those things, they come second nature to me. You know what I mean? Uh, inside of my business. Your photo layout, you know, do it however you choose to do it, but make it the same for each of those items. Um, if you take shoes, take your shoes in the same sequence every single time. If you take photos of hats, 
Take your photos and your hats in the same sequence every time. My process is the same every time. I take the photos, I take the measurements, I fold the item up, I bag it, I put a skew on it, I put it on the scale, take a picture of the weight and the skew, and then I put it in one of these boxes right here. And then I do the same thing over and over and over again. And I don't have to, I don't have to think about anything. I just do two hours of photos, I do three hours of listing, three to four hours of listing. Um, and it's super simple. I recommend selling similar off your own items. So for me, that would mean I take this women's quarter zip pullover. I type women's quarter zip pullover in my store unless I had a Simply Southern quarter, uh, quarter zip pullover. So I'll go to my store, type that in, sell similar off that listing. I'll change the brand. I may change the color. I may have a blue one. Who knows? I'll change the color, change the size, change the tag, uh, the brand. I mean, inside of the description, inside of the condition description. So I'll change the required item specifics that need to be changed to match the item that I'm listing from what I'm selling similar off of. And that allows me to speed up the listing process, make updates to whatever the item may be and save me time from having to fill out a whole brand new listing. Um, and then my condition description is already pasted into the listing. My uh, actual description is actually already filled out for me and everything. Shipping methods already filled out. I literally only have to change a few things and I press save as draft. Um, super simple. Uh, anybody can do this inside of their own business. The last and final tip is resetting to zero. Now, this is the phrase that was coined by Daily Refinement um, for pretty much just getting your station, your processes all started over for the next day. So for that, uh, for me, that looks like laying out 65 items the night before so that they're ready to go in the listing station. I don't have to come in and get everything ready to go for the workday. The items are laid flat, so the wrinkles get pressed uh, out of any items. However, my items are folded, so there's less chance for wrinkles uh, to start off the day with uh, because my mom, shout out to my mom, she, I pay her to do all this laundry for me. Uh, that allows me to spend more time listing instead of uh, doing laundry. So find someone that you could pay to do your laundry for you if you're doing um, clothing in bulk like I am. Uh, it saves a lot of time. Uh, so I lay all the photo, I lay all the items out. Um, I put all my stuff back up. So what that means is like, I'll straighten out my labels, my bags are all set to go. Uh, any of these little white pieces that come on the bag, usually I'll peel it off the bag and throw them right here. So I clean that up. I rip off the strip of my phone, uh, my labels, throw that in the trash, make sure my 12 by 15 bags are straight. Got a new box ready to go. I empty out my trash can and I'm ready to start fresh a new day. And I have boxes taped up ready to go to put clothing in and then i have three more over there uh so i try to stay a day or two ahead on taping up the boxes so that way all i have to do is grab another box when one gets filled with new inventory and just keep it moving that way there's no uh hiccups in the process um i could just go so every day i do the same thing lay out my items clean up my shipping station or my packing station reset my boxes to zero and then that's pretty much it. I do whatever returns I need to do during the daytime. And that gives me a clear conscience. I could just literally get up in the morning, walk over here, grab an item, throw it on here and start taking photos immediately and then jump right into listing the items. And that gives me the clear peace of mind to just focus on doing what I need to do to get my job done and move on to the next task. So hopefully that helps you guys. Hopefully these tips were valuable for you. There are tons and tons of other tips that you can use to grow your business. I just chose the most basic five because a lot of you guys are just getting started on your reselling career. And these are the first five tips that I implemented in my uh, business when I decided to go full time and start to try to grow a business. And they helped me out tremendously. So I hope that they help you as well. Uh, if you guys want more hands-on one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching, I do have a Patreon. You can join there for accountability and just for tips on growing your business uh, there. You can also join the free Discord, Good Pickens Discord that I run with my buddy Nabiar. You can also get a hold of me in there. Um, 
these are just options and uh, things available for you guys. If not, you could just join the channel memberships. Uh, I do a weekly, bi-weekly live call uh, where I give you a story view and just help share knowledge with you guys inside of there. It's more direct than the lives that I do every Tuesday because there's a lot of you guys that attend there and I don't get to focus my energy solely on a handful of you guys. So that's what I do it for this video. Hope it was helpful. Catch you guys on the next one. But until then, let's make this cash, guys. Peace.